So welcome to today's update video. Where is for the week I got with today's update video and we have two years of the story but this is the best one one these development chains have dropped considerably. Well for the time we just went to national working center the last few weeks it never really got going. Like I thought it was starting to encounter some drier and mid level shield and that shear is finally subsiding right now. And we also have a Invest 92 we off the coast of Mexico, and I'll get I'll talk about that more later. It also has a chance to form. Let's take a look at the wind shear environment. So Invest 91E seems to be moving to an area of lower into an so Invest 91E seems to be an area of relatively low shear now of less than ten knots. As a result, it actually we've gone satellites appear to be appears to be thriving. In the meantime, Invest 92 is in a similar moderate, light to moderate shear environment, and it was I think both look, both look decent thanks to this low wind shear. And the mid level shear is actually for, for once not an issue at all with Invest 91E. It is somewhat of an issue with Invest 92E, but it seems, doesn't seem to be limiting it yet. If you look at Invest 91E, you can see it's really starting to become better organized. It's become a little bit better organized. It was a mess a day or two ago, and you can see. The center may not be well defined, the convection is displaced to the south. The convection is, convection is displaced to the south, and just south, and there's been some drier air looking around. You can even already see on visible, on right around here a little bit. You can see the drier air, and that may limit the system somewhat. However, the wind shear is low now. The ships in LGM. The ships and LGM models are actually bullish with this, and they still make the system a tropical storm. The GFS and the European even eventually do develop the system, so it's actually worth keeping an eye on. The might classify this sooner or later. I mean, it looks pretty close, even though they have a relatively low chance of actual tropical cyclone genesis. And you can see within the Dvorakti numbers, the team, this is, this is yielding numbers due to the Dvorakti, you have T1.0, compared to T1.5 of Invest 92 E, so I mean this is better than no nothing because nothing because it because recent because until about 24 hours ago the system was not being classified at all by the double act technique by SAB. But this shows that at least the investors made some progress and so is Invest 92 We off the coast of Mexico. You can see it's starting to resemble tropical depression a bit. The question here we, and this system popped up about a day or two ago further south here and slowly moving north eastward and it's nearing the Mexican coast. And it might and it might move up it'll probably move on shore within the next twenty four hours. It may eventually try and redevelop unless the system slows down, it may eventually try and redevelop in the Bay of Campeche. It may become a trial pressure trough with storms that looks pretty close now. You can see it's really getting together here. You can see it, has, it, has, it resembles a tropical cyclone. You can see some nice equatorial and polar with alpha channels. Even though the AMC only gives them a 20% chance of development, I think this thing could develop. The question is Is there a well defined circulation? There appears to be, even though I'm not really seeing convection wrap around visible, there appears to be a very weak westerly wind, as you can see here on the microwave imagery. And as a result, I do think this is, is, is fairly close to development. I mean, the European actually keeps them offshore for another day. You know, it's may not, you know, even though it's, it's before making up, making landfall on the Gulf of Tuan, the fact that systems tend to spin up. The European keeps them offshore for about 24 more hours and actually develops the system to drop a cycle under HWRF. So there's some development before stalling offshore near the Gulf of Tuan, the fact that we can need to land in action. Regardless, I think this system has a decent chance to become something the UK may also shows it. As a result, I think it's worth keeping an eye on, but regardless of when this system develops tonight, I think the effects on Mexico will be primarily the same with some heavy rains. Um, potentially life threatening flash floods along the, along the Gulf of Tawan, the pack, in the states of. I can't even remember them. No. Can't even pronounce their names, but, but on this extreme southern Mexico area. It was, these these are one of the poorest states of Mexico, this area right here. They're going to see some potentially life threatening flash floods and mudslides. There shouldn't be too much of a wind threat regardless of when the system gets classified or not.
And in the Atlantic, you know, as we mentioned, we have a tropical storm calling, and it's not particularly well organized. It's forecasted to hit Florida later today or tonight as a mid level tropical storm in the Coney National Hurricane Center. Has put winds at 45 knots, and this is based on a Hurricane Hunter aircraft. There'll be another aircraft in this system today, and I would not be surprised they have, they have to increase the intensity a bit. It, based on new Hurricane Hunter aircraft data, when the aircraft gets in there in about an hour or so. Anyhow, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye.